What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Mario Dottillo Show. I'm excited to have you on. We have got a really interesting uh, live. And uh, so I'm really pumped about it. A lot of times on our channel, what we talk about is mobile home park investing, right? And larger commercial real estate investments, things like that. And what I've heard a lot of people doing is, are saying is they're coming to us and saying, how do I get into real estate? Like, what's that starting point of getting into real estate? Not ready to do the, the larger deals. How do I get in? And so we wanted to do this. We're going to have it fully interactive where you can actually comment that I'm going to have to be looking down a little bit. So forgive me on that. But um, I, I want to make sure that you can comment. We're going to do our best to respond and uh, make this kind of an open discussion. Now, what I'm excited about is I've got Jeff Tamborello on today. He is actually the uh, founder, along with one other partner, that started the Southwest Florida Real Estate Investment Association. And uh, I wanted to bring him on because not only is he really active in commercial real estate, he's also got an investment firm that's focusing on land acquisitions, but he's, he's, he has a very um, unique aspect or view of people that are getting into the industry because the Southwest Florida Real Estate Investment Association has a really good combination of very experienced investors, as well as some newer people that are looking to get in because it's such a good resource um, to learn how to start investing. So we've we've supported the, the, uh, the organization for years as a corporate sponsor and love to go and speak there a couple of times a year. And um, Jeff's just a really good dude. And if you want to talk to somebody who's really knows analytics and understands the numbers and trends and all that. Jeff's your guy. So Jeff, hey, thanks so much for hopping on, man. I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this. We need to do some more of these, but uh, thanks for hopping on. Yeah, I appreciate being here. So Jeff has actually had me on his RIA cast, the Southwest Florida RIA cast. So it's kind of, we're switching this up um, and, and, and I'm hosting him today. So kind of fun. So let's, let's get into this a little bit. Um, we've got people who are looking to get into real estate investing. They are, they maybe have a full-time job. They maybe have, um, they maybe have, you know, some, some, some funds that they want to invest, or maybe they are a little bit tight on capital and they don't have the funds at the moment, but they're maybe going to need to raise some money. So I, th I think what I'm getting at is we got people coming in from all different aspects of life. Um, and different career backgrounds and things like that. What, Jeff, you know, from your experience of people coming in to the Southwest Floria and kind of saying, hey, I just want to get started. What's kind of that simple, you know, one tip that you throw out there like, hey, if you want to really get into this and do it right, what's that first bit of advice that you'd give somebody? Uh, it can't really be one question. I mean, the first question and, and, and only one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> de define what you're there to do. Uh, so many people come into the space and they, 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 a, a lot of people want to better themselves and that's awesome. There's a, uh, oh, I talk to a lot that don't have their spending and their lifestyle in control and they somehow think going to real estate investing is what's going to fix that. You know, if I just had more money, well, it doesn't matter how much money you have. If if you can't handle money, well, we all know that person. If they make a million dollars, they spend a million and one dollars. So, but you really have to define what you're there to do. Or, you know, well, everybody has all these great ideas. And then particularly they get into lead funnels and get pitched a lot of stuff, uh, particularly pitched a lot of stuff by people that don't actually do it. They're just, you know, selling information products. But really sit down and decide, what am I here to do? You know, what is the end goal for this? Where do I want to be? You know, and, and it make it complicated. All these, I need X number of doors and, you know, make it simple. Like I was talking to somebody the other day and he asked me what what true wealth would be. And I'm like, $20 million, it yields 7% a year. You know, that's true wealth. <laughs> that's, you know, yeah. free and clear, no debt. You know, that would be very, very hard to... uh to spend all that money. I mean, you could try, but at, at some point you, you, you're going to reach a point where it's going to be rough to even spend that type of yield. Not that 7%, it's pretty hard to grab in today's world unlevered. It is. It is. So, yeah, I mean, I think you, you've said that before. It's not the first time I've heard that. You, you know, you ask that, you always say, know what you're there to do, right? I kind of look at it like this. If someone's trying to 
get into real estate investing, they should first step back and ask themselves, where do I think the economy is going? Where do I think general economy, real estate, everything is going? And then position yourself accordingly. You know, a lot of times people say, well, I want to get into this or I want to get into that. But, and then you ask them the second question, well, where do you think the economy is going? Or do you think there's going to be more jobs? You think real estate's going to do better, worse? How, you know, are people going to have disposable income? And they go, well, the, you know, I think it's going to be horrible soon, but they're saying that they want to invest in class A apartments or something. And you're like, okay, well, yeah. you, you know, you kind of want to position yourself to benefit from the upcoming trend. And that doesn't mean that you can't buy certain asset types, but you've just got to, timing is important in real estate. So for us, I mean, I think everybody kind of knows we invest in mobile home parks and a little bit of self-storage. And the reason we like them is because they're, they're really strong and poor economies. You know, when people are looking to um, downsize and have more disposable income or pay less in rent, they're not up, they're not going up to those $2,000 a month or more apartments. They're looking at mobile home parks or yeah. affordable apartment buildings. So it's kind of like position yourself, right? It's a simple concept, but start out looking at the economy where you think it's going to go. And then from there, decide what you want to invest in. Um, Jeff, let's talk about maybe three common ways that people are starting out their investing careers. Okay. And we've got, actually, we've got quite a few people watching live. So, Hey guys, real quick, let me, let me pause here. And I'm sorry, I keep looking down at my screen, but um, if you are watching and you're looking to get into real estate investing, maybe drop a, a question um, or maybe let us know where you're currently investing. If you're newer or getting started um, and uh, just feel free to interact. Jeff and I can see your comments and, and definitely want to talk. We might even bring a couple of people. I got, a, a friend of mine that goes way back. Um, I'm going to be bringing him on shortly as well to talk. But um, yeah, just make sure to, to participate. And if you guys haven't yet, subscribe to uh, the YouTube channel, MarioDetilloShow.com. Um, and this that's where you're actually watching this from, If even if you're on Facebook or LinkedIn. Subscribe to the channel. We're going to give you a ton more good content around it, real estate investing, mobile home park, self-storage, all, kind of, all kinds of real estate investing. Um, all right, so let's talk maybe about the top three ways that we're seeing people getting into real estate. Most people aren't starting out buying a mobile home, you know, a hundred lot mobile home park or a commercial building. I mean, you've done some pretty big deals, Jeff. I know you've done some big shopping centers. You've done a lot of note deals and things like that. But would you agree that most people start out with something a little bit smaller? They either tend to buy a single family as a rental. Uh, mm -hmm. or they run, jump into the wholesaling space. So really the wholesaling space is where most jump into and few have traction, most actually don't. Agreed. Yeah, totally agree. And um, I, I would say there's, I, I would agree. The three ways that I see people getting in um, is the two that you said. So they're either wholesaling. And the reason that people like wholesaling is because it's minimal capital upfront. People look at that and they say, hey, I can get into investing in real estate without having 20% down on a you know, $200,000 house or $150,000 house. Um, they also feel like there's less risk because they're not having to actually take title. They're tying up the property, putting it under contract, and then they're going and sourcing along uh, uh, another investor who does have the capital to actually buy that contract off of them and close on it. So, and, and they actually sell that contract. Or joint venture the contract with them. Totally. I'm seeing a lot of that right now. Um, you know, people who are wholesaling before are now coming in saying, hey, why don't we do this deal together? And that's smart. I mean, um, we're doing two deals right now where one of them we're buying a contract, the other one we're um, joint venturing with the person who has it under contract. So it's great point. Yeah, it's a well, good point. with that, the best way to learn about real estate is to actually do real estate. Uh, I can, there are people that have spent $100,000 in seminars and have never done a deal in their life or done one deal. And the most important thing is to actually do something, do a deal, learn something, buy a lot, you know, actually get in the game. Because uh, I always say there's, there's, there's randomness and it goes in both directions, positive and negative. But if you don't have a chip in the game, you're never going to, you're never going to capture it. I mean, sometimes you capture it negatively, but honestly, the world works better. That I think for the most part, I can tell you, we set up a land wholesaling business in uh, the beginning of the pandemic. 
and uh, other than other than some of the role players in it, uh, it was brilliant. You know, it was absolutely brilliant. We crushed it. Uh, and then we uh, kind of disbanded that partnership and then set up a new one. And that's crushing it even more. But you but in, if you're not in the game, uh, you're never going to learn. And more importantly, you know, if you didn't own Tesla stock in 2015, you know, it took a shot at it. You're you're probably not your your net worth's not as good as it could have been. Yeah. So, or Bitcoin. Look at Bitcoin. I mean, the early adopters of Bitcoin, uh, you put a hundred bucks in it at the beginning, it's like 55 million today. So, I, I mean, know. at some point you got to take a shot and it's really easy. Uh, so many new investors are scared. Uh, you've got a lot of family members that really have your best interest at heart in their ear telling them it's a bad idea. Uh, I always say you should start investing with your unneeded reserves. You know, yeah. so you you got your life in order. You've got some money in the bank in case you get in a car wreck and break your leg and can't work. And then and then you get after it. You know, what, what, once you've got that stable platform, because then you're going to make better decisions. Uh, I was telling you before we jumped on this, there's some land guru is out telling uh, people that you should be able to sell a lot for 10 percent of the average price of a home. So you've got these people in Lehigh tying up, tying up lots at twice market and trying to sell them at four times market because their guru whose tax return probably doesn't reflect that he, they do land actually for a living or they've done it 25 years ago is uh, it, it doesn't work. I mean, particularly Lehigh Acres, which is where about half these calls come from because there's a lot of lots out there. Uh, they're pitching I had a guy twenty five thousand dollar Lehigh lot, and I'm like, dude, it's worth ten. Well, I got a yeah. contract for fifteen because that's what the seller would take. I just started <laughs> laughing. I was, and, and there's a point where you're, uh, I call it casting pearls before the swine. I mean, he just doesn't. I'm trying to drop a little knowledge on the guy, and he just didn't want to hear it. You know, I get it. He's trying to make money. You know, the, there's that focus, and that's cool. But at some point, you know, we live in Southwest Florida, and it's beautiful, and you got the water, and you got fishing. And the intelligent fishermen know how to read a tide chart. Yeah. You know, and yeah. Uh, they, they do. <laughs> well, so, real, real quick. So, yeah, wholesaling is definitely um, a way that a lot of people start getting into the business. And it's and you could I mean, that that doesn't mean that people who are really experienced aren't wholesaling either. It's just a good way in, you know, so they're they're basically tying up contracts tying up properties on contract, and then they're selling that contract to other investors. What's great about it is you can scale that. I mean, like you've done, you've definitely scaled it um, across Florida. There's minimal risk and uh, you can do it from anywhere. And uh, in a minute, in, in a few minutes here, I'm hoping uh, my buddy, uh, Dimitri messages in here, but uh, I'm going to be doing a, doing a, a, a similar discussion with him and one other buddy of mine, Andreas. They're both out of the country buying and investing in in around the united states from out of the country and most of their strategy is wholesaling but you know the negative on the wholesaling is it's, it's i mean you're, you're constantly doing transactional business and it's yeah. tax pretty high too there's pretty high taxes on that so there's some good and bads the other way that you said jeff is rentals and um you know, so renting out single family homes works, but there's not a lot of money in it, especially right now. Now, if we were talking 2009, there may be a little bit better yield there. But generally speaking, single renting out a single family home doesn't produce a real large amount of yield. So you need to make sure if you're doing that, you're buying them right so that you're benefiting both from the cash flow, but also the upside if it, um uh, an appreciation on the property and things. Well, there's like no that. scale too. Like the, yeah. on a single family home, when when the roof goes bad, you basically just gave up a year's cash flow, which is yeah, fine. You know, like I mean, you should have be budgeting your replacement for reserves should account for this. But yeah. you know, particularly HVAC system, you know, you can get a deal, a really good yeah, deal. Really you good probably deal. shouldn't do it. Forty eight hundred dollars is too cheap. Almost, you're you're probably not going to get the best work at that. But you know, you're looking at what four months gone, five months yeah. gone. So you yeah. know, that's the one issue with single family homes is that you uh, there's going to be some times where you just have a push for a year if you hold it long term. Yeah. You know, the other thing is too, on the single family home side, you do get the depreciation. Maybe cash flow isn't the best, but um, they're, the, like you said, mm -hmm. scaling also doing it on a large scale across a large traffic area is tough. 
and also the financing. I mean, at some point you're going to have to go out and get some unique financing to be able to do it at a larger level um, versus, you know, commercial. They're not necessarily looking so much at, at you personally. They're more looking at the property and the cash flow that it produces. So um, it's very doable to finance them. It's just harder. Um, uh, well, not so, only with that, right now you're talking about financing. One of the greatest assets you can have is a 30 year fixed rate note at three and a quarter percent. In, in, in a massively inflationary environment. I mean, we don't know whether it's, everybody keeps saying hyperinflation and they want to say the seventies was hyperinflation, but the seventies was actually more of like, a, I was like two years old when the seventies kicked in, but it, the, it, it was more of a secular inflation. You know what I mean? So that, that 30 year fixed rate note, I mean, maybe the most amazing debt you'll ever going to get right now going into an inflationary, but if it's, if it turns out to not be inflationary and at some point becomes deflationary, that 30 year fixed rate note at three and a quarter percent is kind of the albatross about your neck. So yeah. it, it's really a bit of a bit of a gamble right now. Agreed. Yeah. So, I mean, I think buying and renting single family homes is good. There's obviously that management aspect to it that is pretty time intent, that time intense and you got to have the people to do it or you're going to create a job for yourself. We never really bought single family homes to rent them. When, you know, a lot of people know on this channel that I started out buying single family homes, um, wholesaling, then moved into rehabbing and selling, and then kind of moved into commercial. But never, it was always a trading model. I was never buying and holding. Now, if you're looking to hold something a little bit smaller, maybe consider duplex, triplex, fourplex, small apartments, things like that, where you've got some diversification. So when you know you lose a tenant, you don't go from 100% to 0% occupancy. Um, there's, there's, I think small multifamily is a great way to get into buy and hold a lot better than the single family buy and hold. Um, Not to mention just to get started, buy a duplex, live in one side, rent the other. Yeah, I've got we've got some friends that are doing that right now. They're looking for a duplex, triplex, something like that. They're going to live in one. It's now it's called house hacking. It was never called house hacking before, but but um, you know they're looking to do that, and it's it's a great way to get into the business. Um, yeah, and and there's better financing for that too. Well, you get a chip in the game too. I mean, what you can't get lucky if you're not in the game. I mean, and, exactly. you know, I mean, a hundred percent. I that's I can't say enough to. We I, there's people that come to the RIA meeting that are they're 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 huge fans of investing, but they don't actually you know they don't pull the trigger. They don't. I don't care if you buy a, a garbage lot somewhere at somewhere. Do something. You know you're never gonna. And, and at some point, business begets business, and you know next thing you know, this leads to that. You figure this out, and you're into something huge. You know, so you, I mean, you learn best by doing. I mean, you can't you can't textbook learn this stuff. You can to an extent to get you comfortable. But you're going to have to bump your head and actually do it. You know, the one other way that we haven't talked about um, is that rehabbing and, and, and selling or flipping of single family homes. And what's good about that is that you can you buy the home, you fix it up and then you turn around. sell. that's what everybody sees on TV. Right. Um, the great thing about that is you, there's some pretty good money in it. The bad part about it is it's a lot of work. You got to have a crew. There's more risk in it. Um, than let's say wholesaling, and you're much more susceptible to the market. I mean, if your timing is off and you're buying things at the beginning of a project that's a heavy rehab and it's a few month project and the bottom falls out, you might be blowing it out a little more than you wanted to. So there's, and, and there's definitely a construction aspect that you have to have um, in order to do that. So I, you know, I tell people, look, it, start out with the wholesaling then maybe if you get comfortable, work your way into the rehabbing. But I've heard a lot of people lately, maybe you two have too, Jeff. A lot of people who are doing heavy rehabs have now gotten out of that because the market's so strong. Now they're doing more wholesaling because they don't have to do the work or they're wholesaling it. They're buying yeah. it, cleaning it, and then putting it on the MLS and selling it re to a retail buyer that wants a, wants to do their own. So, yeah, the, the flips can be fun. I mean, it's that whole redesign the house and at the end of it, you kind of, wow, look what we did and you have that moment, but mm -hmm. it's a lot of, it's, it's a lot of, uh, a lot of friction, a lot of, uh, why this thing, I, 
you know, either you pay through the nose for quality people or you're going to be running around and reacting to a lot of, uh, I call it crises that you don't create, but they're your responsibility. You know, yeah. the drywall guy doesn't show up. The drywall guy leaves the stuff outside and some of it gets stolen. You know, there, there's just the, the rehabs, there's a lot of randomness in rehabs. And in particularly the older the home, the, the more you rip out, the more you're going to rip out, you know, that's, you know, yeah. uh, there's some flippers that actually kind of, they have, you know, you always have your fudge percentage, you know, 10%, 5%. And uh, most of it's based on the year of the home. If the home's like less than 10 years old, it's it's a 5% fudge factor for the rehab. If the home's 40 years old, it's a 25% fudge factor. So if you think that, uh, if you think that, uh, you know, that's a $40,000 rehab and the home's, you know, built in 78, you better go 65 because that's probably where you're going to end up. And, yeah. uh, even with an amazing inspection, you're still going to probably end up there once they start ripping stuff out. Yeah, totally agree. So it's also hard to scale outside of a small geographic area because you got crews and you got to know that market really well. And so, I mean, we did a fair amount of that, started to go into the Orlando market and just had, I think timing wasn't real good, but also it was just, it was definitely more challenging building crews out of town and keeping oversight on that stuff. So Totally agree with you. So, hey, I want to pause really quick. We've got a bunch of people watching this live. And um, if, if, if you want to participate, jump over to the YouTube channel. I put a link in the comments um, on, on Facebook and LinkedIn. So if you want to get interactive with us, click that link, jump over to the YouTube video. And then in the comments, you can comment. I've got a couple of comments here, actually, um, that, uh, that we want to respond to and make this an interactive discussion. Also, um, if uh, if you haven't already, make sure that you're subscribed to the Mario Dottillo show. We're going to keep bringing more and more good content here. I'm going to throw this up on the screen. Um, make sure that uh, that you subscribe. I do a lot of mobile home park, uh, a little bit of self-storage discussion, a lot of commercial real estate discussion. But we're going to keep doing more of this as well for people who are looking to get into the business. Um, so make sure you subscribe. It's right on the screen and drop some comments. Let's let's pause here. We talked about kind of the three main ways that people get started in real estate investing or typically get into it. Let's look at some comments here and uh, and communicate. And then I want to bring on a, a buddy of mine who's recently got started just in 2021. And he's got kind of a, a cool quick story just on how he got into it. Um, so it looks like um, Steve said, uh, what's up, Steve? So Steve is actually a part of our MHP tribe. He's uh, he operates mobile home communities with a with a good sized group around the country. He just escaped to Miami, so he's in paradise now from up north. Um, and he said we have parks in Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan, and small one in Georgia. So he's growing. And uh, Steve's a really good guy and definitely an ops person. So. Um, he's, he's a good guy. So thanks for getting on Steve. Um, Dimitri said, uh, Lehigh lots were perfect to wholesale this year. Dimitri's done a lot of lots and uh, a lot of wholesaling. He's a good friend of mine. I'm going to, uh, Dimitri, I, I sent you a link, I believe, um, on, so you can hop on here real quick too, for a minute. If you can find that, um, hop on, but, uh, also, uh, Jim, uh, Jim is actually the cool part about this. Jim is actually an acquisition manager for us for the Midwest. And um, he uh, joined our team recently and uh, he said Zillow's closing their iBuyer program, which was uh, buy, fix and sell. Also, they're uh, likely to lose 300 million to 500 million. This should give caution for all, uh, all to do their uh, own research diligently on the single fam family home flipping. So great point. Um, hey, Jim, thanks for hopping on and we're excited to have you on the team. Jim has got a ton of experience in commercial real estate. And uh, if you guys have a mobile home park or self storage facility in the Midwest, make sure you get on our website, um, the REA group and connect with Jim. And uh, we'd love to partner with you or um, buy your contracts, whatever. So, um, Let's see here. Let's go back to our discussion here and let's talk about um, number one, subscribing to the channel. I know I'm pushing that hard. We're selling nothing. So Jeff and I got nothing to sell except for just subscribers, which is completely free. So I just want to keep you tuned into what we're doing. Um, let's talk a little bit about how we both got started. Um, maybe before that, I'm kind of hopping around. Let's bring on Elsie because I got him 
hanging out in the uh, in the um, in the wings here. Let me bring him on. LZ, what's up, dude? Hey, Mario, how you doing? Good, good. Hey, do me a favor. Turn down your volume just a little bit. Is that you better? That I think so. Yep. All, All right. right. So, hey, LZ, um, long time no see. LZ and I go back a long time. We, uh, man, we got history. What has it been uh, since 2000, maybe four, three, five, something like that? Uh, um, that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a previous life, in a previous business. And uh, it's kind of cool because be, watching LZ on social media, he started posting some of the uh, some of the deals that he's doing. He's recently gotten into uh, real estate investing. And LZ, you've got maybe a minute here or two. Can you just quickly tell us when you got started, um, what strategy you've been doing to get into real estate and maybe one quick tip that kind of got you over the edge to get your first deal going. Yeah, sure. Um, so, you know, I'm a first generation everything. So college, first generation, generation college uh, graduate, um, first generation corporate professional, um, and now first generation real estate investor. So I kind of had to navigate uncharted territory if you will um, yeah didn't have family to help you exactly um and i didn't start off with a ton of cash or anything like that so um one day i uh sat down and i started thinking how can i break into this industry because i've been interested in real estate since i was a teenager um and i found a gateway uh into real estate via house hacking before the term was even coined. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I purchased a single family uh, as my first investment uh, to live in. And I was very intentional about what type of single family. It had to have at least three bedrooms. It had to have, you know, one to two bathrooms. Uh, I ended up finding a four bedroom, two bath. I bought that uh, on FHA. I had to come up with eight, eight grand that I saved up myself uh, yep. from working ridiculous hours. <laughs> um, I ended up living there by myself for about a year or so. And then I moved in some buddies and they started paying me a few hundred bucks uh, a month. So I was living for very little. And saving a difference, I made modest improvements like painting, doing some flooring, stuff like that. I uh, got to the point where the house actually appreciated and I pulled out $20,000. So I paid myself back what I put in into the down payment, what I put into the minor repairs. And I took some of the rest of the proceeds. And, um, and this was on a cash out refi, mind you, to get out of FHA and into conventional. I took the proceeds, I rolled that into a triplex um, that I did my second house hack on. Uh, it was three bedrooms up top, two three bedroom units up top, a two bedroom below. I moved into the smaller unit, um, collected the rent from the other two units and that more than covered my mortgage, taxes, insurance, everything. So nice. I saved more money um, which I like how it was mentioned earlier before that you got to handle money well if you're going to get into this game. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself in hot water. You'd be better off not investing at all if you're no good with money, in my opinion. Um, Agreed. Uh, took the savings from that, and I actually bought a duplex on contract for deed that I found through a wholesaler, which I still hold right now. Um, I feel like I got a steal of a deal with that. Um, I know for a fact it was worth 50000 more than what I paid for it out the gate, uh, conservatively. And I also took some of the other uh, savings that I had and bought a fourplex, uh, which also was perfect timing because the fourplex market in Minneapolis just took off like immediately after I got into that deal. And I ended up buying that on FHA that I refied into a conventional in a year. Nice. Um, and so now I'm actually looking for my next house hack. 
Uh, I think I got one or two more left in me before I, I call it quits <laughs> on the outside game. Just yeah. because, I mean, to control, like, for example, that fourplex is over $500,000. To control that with $11,000 down, I mean, you can't beat that at yeah. a, basically a 3% interest rate. Um, right now, I'm just uh, consolidating capital and I'm looking for my next house hack and another investment property. I've actually even been dipping my toes into Florida to see if there's some opportunity there in the Tampa, Tampa, uh, St. Petersburg area. Awesome. So but yeah, this has been all over a span of like three years. Man, well, what's cool about this is that you're doing exactly what we were talking about. Number one, you house hack. Number two, you're buying multi, small multifamily. You're looking at cash flow from that, but also you're 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 doing it all right, which is awesome. And um, I'm proud of you, dude. It's it's cool to see you grow and scale. And and uh, Florida's a Florida's a, a fun place to invest. I was investing from Minnesota for several years down in in Florida yeah, yeah, from Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. So um come on yeah. come on down everybody else is might as well yeah real, real estate is amazing i essentially turned eight thousand dollars into a 1.5 1.6 million dollar portfolio in three years that's awesome yeah i mean that's 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 how you can grow some serious net worth yeah. all right so hey lz thanks for hopping on dude i love the fact that you that you took action on it hold on and can we can we keep him on for one second yeah, yeah. With that jump in your net worth, how much has your life changed? Do you still have you do you do anything different, or are you just you just even more focused? I, I've avoided the lifestyle creep, um, <laughs> like the plague. <laughs> Not, and and Mario knows this because we're connected on social media. Every so often, I start to get the itch of uh, do I buy a watch? Do I buy a car? Um, but I. You know, it, I don't know if it's a mild obsession. I always end up just looking for more properties. <laughs> yeah, he's he's still smart. He hasn't got he, the itch hasn't pushed him over. <laughs> um, I, awesome. I try and stay frugal at, from time to time. I like to buy 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 something fun or yeah. do something yeah. fun. But it's definitely good to to stay frugal, scale it up, build it, focus on reinvesting the money. So that's that's awesome, Elsie. Uh, Jeff, you got anything else for Elsie? No, great job, man. I'm proud of you, dude. I yeah, mean, you're doing it right. Keep doing it. Just don't, uh, don't, uh, don't ever take your eye off the ball, and you'll be Gucci, man. Yeah, appreciate yep. that. Way to go, LZ. Hey, um, if you guys got any questions for LZ, drop them in the comments. I'm sure he'll follow this and uh, make he'll answer questions kind of going forward in the future. Even if you're watching the replay of this, drop your comments for LZ in uh here on youtube and uh he'll uh he'll stay in tune with you um cool thanks so much lz for being on dude catch you in a bit thanks for having me. all right so hey i got one other person i want to bring on really quick um he's actually a good friend of mine he was on the uh comments there and uh we i was trying to get him to uh to get the link i was trying to get the link over to him let me look sorry i'm looking down at my screen um let's see here so Get him on here. All right. Hey. So I've got Dimitri um, on here as well. What's up, dude? So I'm good, man. How about yourself? Awesome. So Dimitri is actually a longtime friend of mine. He's somewhere in the world today, um, which we could talk about in a I second. You You're where? Can you hear me? Yeah. Where are you at, Dimitri? What country? Yeah, he's he's having some tech difficulties. Can you hear me now? Nope, he's having some trouble. Um, all right, so Dimitri is just going to be a face for me for a minute until he can hear. <laughs> um, Sound but, is gone. I don't know what. Yeah, happens. <coughs> that's all right. Um, so basically, Dimitri is going to be on with um, Andreas, another buddy of mine. And um, they are going to be talking about how they're investing in the United States from outside the country. And that's going to be probably in a couple of weeks. We're going to do kind of a similar discussion here. Just goes to show that people can can really build a business and, and invest in the United States from outside the country. So if you're in the U.S., 
and struggling, what the heck, let's get to work. These guys are doing it from outside the country. So I'm, uh, I'm super pumped about that. Here he is back again. We'll try it one more time. Okay, man. Right, I Dimitri. think we're good now. Okay, cool. <laughs> Dimitri, where are you at in the world today? Uh, right now, I'm in uh, Istanbul, actually, in Turkey. So, awesome. And Dimitri yeah. lives in Belgium, but right. you know what's what's kind of cool is Dimitri's wife has a YouTube channel, and uh, and uh, yeah. so Dimitri, so Dimitri's actually a guest on that show a lot. He plays the husband. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> an unwanted guest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he's the. Uh, He's the uh, the husband on the show, but what's cool about it is, you know, it's kind of like the lifestyles of the rich and famous. Um, he's he's always in a different country. They they live a pretty awesome lifestyle, and they've done really well for themselves. And a lot of that is uh, from real estate. I'm gonna mute you here for a second, Dimitri. Um, but uh, so yeah, he's gonna be talking about investing outside from outside the United States into the U.S. coming up here pretty quick. So watch for that invite. Hey. Hey Dimitri, right. I know you've been, I know you've been in the game for a while, and you got some right. background noise, so I want to keep this short. Um, one tip for somebody looking to get into real estate investing: they want to do their first deal. What's that one right. quick tip for them? Well, I think the most important thing is if you make an offer and you have two numbers in mind, always pick the lowest number because the last thing you want to do is tie up a property at a at a price that is too high. And I think the number the number one reason why a lot of people don't succeed in wholesaling is because they're just they're just scared of making offers at at prices that are wholesale that are not retail and they don't really believe i think in their own services which is if you're really good at wholesaling in the sense that you know you know your business you do provide a service because i tell people like you know you sign today in 20 days it used to be 15 but now in 20 days like we'll be closed we, like you'll have your money and so you do provide a service. You're kind of like a pawn shop for real estate. That's the way I look at it. So I make like 150 to 200 offers a week right now. And um, I have my niche in marketing, which I can't go too much into right now because it's working for now. But in a, in a year or two, it will be different again. Um, but yeah, I, I think the most important thing is to make offers, to make a lot of offers and to understand your service that you're providing to the marketplace and to communicate that well to the people that are selling to you because only only maybe one in 50 people that are selling their property are going to sell it at a wholesale price because because you know 94 out of 50 people don't have a problem that they need to be solved like uh, whether it's having to deal with liens or whether it's you know needing the money quickly or 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 wanting to do it wanting to sell their property while they live in Colombia and they they don't know a realtor who can you know organize that for them so you're solving a problem and you're basically a pawn shop for real estate and you have to um, be able to deal with the rejection and make a lot of offers i think that's the most important thing so love it dude thanks for hopping on i'm gonna i'm gonna pull you off now and uh, jeff we're gonna right. finish up here but hey make sure that you are plugged into um plugged into the uh discussion that we're gonna be doing here soon it's gonna be on the on mario Dottillo show Dot com. You can uh, watch out for that. Thanks again, Dimitri. Catch you later. I muted him because his sound was loud. <laughs> All right. So, hey, so um, let's keep going here. A few more minutes. We've got, um, let's talk about how Jeff, you and I got into the business briefly. Um, two minutes. What do you got? Tell us the quick story and how you got on that first deal that you did. I was doing mortgages for Peter Collar and a lot sort of envious of his side of the HUD versus my little mortgage broker fee, which he beat <laughs> up pretty well. And uh, basically, I think we, uh, Peter tied up the whole HUD list to prevent a Miami investor from coming here. And uh, I bought five houses with hard money in one day. And uh, we just started rehab and had no idea what we were doing. I mean, oh, no idea what we were five doing. Five in one day? Yeah. On one on, on, on one blanket hard money loan and just took the uh, the one with the least amount of work and did it first so we could get some money moving. And irony is we ended up selling that house to the AC guy who came out to uh, service the AC. So, that's I mean, awesome. it, it all kind of worked perfectly. So, yeah, that's that's how I got started. I've done, you know, had ups, had downs. Uh, we've done kind of everything from notes, distress notes, uh all kinds of different, you know, Did some flips. commercial stuff, 
quite yeah. a bit of commercial. Yeah. Yeah, it was part of a fund that we were buying uh, bad debt back in the day, and then so all the dumb money came into space, and that was such an education for me. Uh, the joke is what I learned is, for me personally, I would never own an office building, maybe to have my business in, but that's it. You know, compared to say industrial self storage or anything else that actually yields well. Uh, particularly with office being, you know, every time you get a new office tenant, they want the coffee maker on that side. Now we want the copy <laughs> machine back there now. And, you know, and then that's a negotiation for the TI and, and all that. So it's, it was definitely for me, uh, it put me in a bigger world and uh, private equity type world. And it was uh, really an education as far as uh, asset types. I mean, we bought a lot of office. We did okay on it, but we did a lot better on the industrial. And we really crushed the land of everything we did. Land was the absolute ugliest thing in the room at the time. And that's where we actually made the best yields. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it, it's funny because we, I was talking to somebody about it recently. When you're investing in a market that's pretty rough, like call it 09, buying those single family homes at 35 a square foot or something, 30 bucks a square foot, 35 bucks a square foot was pretty scary. I mean, even then you just, now we look back and we're like, how could it possibly go lower? But when you're in it, it's, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you, you got to build up some guts to be investing when everybody's scared, but that's where the real money's made. And so, you know, you just gotta, I won't use the phrase, but you get, you just got to toughen up and, and, and make smart decisions and, and have the guts to do it. And you can well, really it, kill it. It's really hurting. I mean, Oh, we say this at the REA meeting all the time. Uh, in 2006, everybody waited in line for a $330,000 property that rented for $1,600 a month. Uh, that's not an investment. That's an act of lunacy. And then on top of that, they had debt on it. So, you know, yeah. it was at best, it was a $500 a month negative cash flow. At and best. then they would, three years later, would not buy the same house for sixty five grand that rented for eight fifty a month. Yeah, yeah, it's and, and that's the human that's human beings as a whole. You know, uh, it was it was just fun to watch. And I can remember sitting with a spreadsheet going, these are great investments. You're 10 percent a year cash on cash on lever. And even yeah. if it goes down, what do you care? At some point, you know, you're never going to time a market perfectly. You can generally time a, a bottom third and a top third of a market. You know, that's that's not that hard to do. But, you know, and that's with metrics. So, you know, and uh, I got pretty good math. And I, right now in this market, I'm clueless. I, I don't really know what it's doing, but so important to, uh, if you're in a room full of people going the same way, panic. Like anytime I'm, I'm in a crowd and the crowd agrees with me, I feel like I'm in the wrong crowd. And that's just a contrarian in me. And if you're an investor, you're a contrarian. You know, nobody goes out and says, hey, that's the home I want to buy that's got like, you know, the windows beaten out and holes in the roof to where as an investor, I smell money when I, when I see that. Same right. thing with you. You find a mobile home park where they own all the mobile homes and the infrastructure's messed up and, you know, they're, they've got way too many amenities and, you know, every red flag you could have for a mobile home park, that's money if you fix it. Absolutely. Um, you know, I think too... People go into it with the idea that, you know, um, they're going to find that deal immediately. And a lot of times, I mean, the people that I see really that have built up a, a good portfolio, a lot of them took a while to get their first deal, you know, and even went under contract on a few things and ended up canceling. And, and so it's really a lot of patience. And once you get over that first hump, uh, that first deal, that first hump, it's like, things really start to come together. Let me tell you a little bit about how I got started. I, I had a, um, uh, a mortgage company with a partner up in Minnesota. From there, we decided we were going to start a real estate company. This is way back. Um, and uh, we were doing good. And um, actually, let me take that back. Let me back up. I'm, I'm wrong about that. My first real estate investment was before I had the mortgage and real estate company. Now that I think about it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to pull this up. This is kind of funny. I'm going to go on memory lane. I was digging through a, a box the other day cause I was reorganizing my office. My wife was like, Hey, we got to get this straightened up. So I was going through a box and I found this, a copy of my, the first check from the first deal that I ever bought. 
<laughs> and it goes back, it's way back at uh, January 31st of 2006. And uh, I, like I got eight years it. old then, I think. <laughs> Somewhere around there. I was an early learn, right? But yeah. um, I, you know, I had, I had a marketing business. That's actually how I know LZ. Um, and uh, decided that I wanted to start buying real estate. I, uh, my partner at the time, Paul, he gave me a couple books. He's like, hey, study up. He had been doing some real estate investing. So I started reading a ton of books and um, I call it, I got my Barnes and Noble degree and I literally just sat in Barnes and Noble. I didn't even buy half the books. I just grab a stack of books and I just start reading them, grab a cup of coffee and would just start reading them and, and uh, just absorbed as much as I could. And that first deal that I did was just a single family home, never actually saw it. Um, they, uh, I want to say that they post, they posted it in an online newspaper, you know, how newspaper has online. I think I found it there, reached out to them and it was a home that, um, that they were in a divorce situation, tied it up and, uh, signed, sold the contract to somebody else. Again, never met him before and, uh, made myself $3,579. That was like wow. the biggest deal to do one deal or do that first deal at, you know, 3,800 bucks. That was the best $3,800 I ever made oh, yeah. because, you know, all that studying up and then going and actually taking action and getting a check. I was like, Oh man, this, this actually works. I can do this. Um, the second deal I found, I had two checks in the same box. It's pretty awesome. The second deal I did was, um, I'm going to cover over who this was from, but uh, cause you might know some people might know them, but, uh, this deal was bigger. This was a luxury home, $33,000 on my second deal, similar, tied it up um, and wholesaled the contract out. And uh, that was on a luxury home. A builder was building it for somebody. The, they ran out of money or whatever, and uh, he just had to sell. And so tied it up, actually kind of co-wholesaled that with another person and uh, made 33 grand on my second deal. So I was, I was sold after that. But um, Wow. Yeah, it was it was like a flashback because I hadn't thought about those deals in I don't know so many years. That was a long time ago, and uh, so it was kind of cool to pull that out of a box. And it's just, always good to go back and reconnect with with that type of transactions. Just to uh, first of all, it's cool, and then secondly, uh, I'm big on after action. Every time I uh, I pivot out of something, every time I do something, I spend as much time dissecting it uh how could i we have done it better how could we have proved it how could we have done anything and uh it's really it's really good to go back and look at your old deals i mean it's so important because you're gonna as you gain more knowledge you're gonna see stuff that you did not see at the time so yeah. it's so important to after action your deals to really take that and not like immediately particularly while the uh, i got a check feeling because my joke in real estate all the pain goes away when you get a check Sure. So, because yeah. you have you some deals that everything are, you went through to get the deal done. <laughs> yeah, there's some deals you're just pushing a rock up a hill with a wet noodle, you know. But when you get the check, everything feels great. So, you know, wait a few months, pull out, and really look at it, and and usually you'll realize I should have did this, I should have that. All my problems would have went away. So, yeah. and then make sure you remember that because uh, I, I always use sports analogies. It's your side adjustments for football. You know, safety goes this way. We go this way. When this happens in a rehab, we're probably better off doing this than that, particularly just, you know, once you start replacing a little bit of sub four, just rip the whole sub four out and get it over with because the inspector is yeah. going to find what you didn't fix. I promise you. Love it. Good. Some good nuggets. Um, so guys, we've got about uh Call it a couple, few more minutes. Um, we are gonna, then we're gonna wrap up. But I want to make sure that we answer any questions you've got. So if you are watching on Facebook, LinkedIn, make sure you hop over to the YouTube link in the comments and uh, drop in the comments there, and we can answer it for you. You know, if you're thinking about getting into real estate um, or you are in real estate just getting going, maybe having some hurdles, would love to answer those. You know, Jeff, I think one thing that people underestimate. Well, they do one of two things. They underestimate or they overestimate education. Um, either they don't research enough and they watch um, Flip This House on HGTV or whatever. And they're like, cool, I'm going to go do this. And then they just 
do it without really understanding what they're doing because they think that that's like a, an education um, or they go the opposite route and it's analysis paralysis. They overstudy, they, they join the RIA, they take all these courses. And, and I want to mention something that I think is crucial for people to recognize. The reason that I support the Southwest Florida RIA, uh, Real Estate Investment Association so much is because they don't do the pitch fest. It's all like active investors getting up and talking about what they're doing. And it's, it. I mean, they've got a very seasoned investor group that helps the newer people getting in to the industry. And it's it's a very legit organization. There's a lot of real estate investment associations or RIAs that just bring in the people on a circuit and they sell them crap. And, and so it's really important to recognize you know, who you're learning from and what they have invested in for, for what they've got going on. It's purely to help people and network and to do deals with people. They're not constantly selling something. So, you know, when you're studying up, yeah, take a course, that's fine. Do a training. But if you're spending tens of thousands of dollars on a bunch of courses and you haven't made offers yet, you need to get in the game like Jeff was talking about. Or if you're trying to do something without getting at least some basic training or some basic education or reading a bunch of books, you need to study up because one way or another, you're either going to get hurt or you're not going to do any, well, you're going to get hurt both ways because you're either going to not do it, you're going to do a bad deal or you're going to spend so much money on stuff and, and just waste money and never actually do a deal. So it's kind of like it goes both ways, but there's a sweet spot there, right? Um, let me actually yeah, note too- there's so yeah, many ahead. unique ways to get an education too. Uh, reach out to somebody that's doing a business and hey, can I can I help? Can I be part of the team? Uh, Home Depot and Lowe's have all these Saturday clinics on how to for free how to how to lay tile, how to install a vanity, how to you know, and you even get free coffee. So you, uh, <laughs> I mean, but seriously, you, you there's so many other avenues, and I'm not saying yeah, again, there are. There are some gurus out there that teach real stuff that actually add value, but there's a lot of them that always, you know, we don't do information product sales at the Southwest Florida RIA and we get calls, you know, from there's different people to try and book the speakers in. And uh, I always say, send me your redacted 1040. And if your 1040s reflect your sales pitch, then let's talk, let's do it. Nobody's Love ever it. taken me up on, on that, you know, and that's, you get so many of them and I can, where we pivoted away from it was believe it or not, late 06. And I'm sitting with a books and takes uh, books and tape speaker uh, after the seminar, having a drink with him. And I realized this guy doesn't actually do real estate for a living. You know, it really was like, wow. And uh, it would, you know, it's, it's, it's not a good feeling. I mean, and, and everybody's entitled to a living, but, there, there's so many ways to get an education. And I will also tell you, most of what you see on YouTube is just a lead funnel. Totally. So, I mean, like, you're like me. I, I'll give out education. I want to do deals. Yeah. I've done a lot of deals with people in the RIA. I mean, uh, I had a, one of the RIA members brought me a package of 48 lots and we moved it yeah. this year. So yeah. I had another one that was buying a fourplex and it had a golf access lot next to it. And we ended up buying it off him for 110 and we kind of made a little money on it. So, and it helped him get the transaction done as well. So, you know, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely, and you also, I can't tell you enough, the biggest thing for you is your circle. You know, they always say that five people you spend your time with, and that doesn't mean disown your mom or your cousins or anything like that, but you really, your circle is so important. Like when uh, a buddy of mine was in the office when the call came in with that golf access lot and he, and we, we, we partnered up on it and he was like, Oh my God. Oh my. And, and cause I kind of didn't see it at the time. I, I really didn't see the deal. I hadn't done the due diligence, but he's seen it a hundred percent and he was actually 100% right as to what the, uh, somebody just walked in my office, uh, as to what the, uh, what it really was. So, you know, your circle, you want to be around people that are crushing it. Uh, you also want to be around people that are realistic. Uh, you know, there's so many of these $5,000 weekends that people attend that are really just motivational, which I guess if you need that, you need that. But, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of ways to make money in this game. And most of it's pretty sensible. Uh, we have a guy in the RIA. I'm just going to say his first name is Rick. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. He owns mm -hmm. properties in three states, about probably 250 doors. Uh, he bought a Carlton Sheets course in the 80s. <laughs> uh, and, but he just really just 
and and all he does is live and breathe and eat real estate. I mean, that's, and he, he's, he's at the point where he's a, he, he's the person they put on the wall as the goal, you know, passive income, hire a property manager, get on a yacht and never come back. And the irony for him is, is, is the action is, is, is the motivation. He lives for the action. So, I mean, he hasn't, he's looking at other markets cause he hasn't bought anything in a while. And I think it just makes him sad, you know, no deals. The deal and, junkie. Yeah, no, I get it. I totally get it. We do. <laughs> probably 15 to 50 lots a month. And while we do, we do make a little bit of money doing it. Uh, it's really the action. Every time that signed contract comes in, I get fired up, you know, Hey, we did it. We actually, you know, we executed. So, yeah. And, I and think if you have real, that mentality that you're going to make money. In real estate, it's, I, I think it'd be really boring if you always scored. I mean like that, I think the, I, I think it would, that the roller coaster ride of the, of this business um, is what makes it so exciting. You get the ups and the downs. One day you're like, score. The next day, like, oh, crap, why am I doing this? Um, and that's well, just me, you real. You know? Most of the people watching this are probably going to jump into wholesaling. And like I'm on everybody else's list in town somehow, some way. There's one tip for you. you. Have burner emails. Always put your burner emails in your own databases so you can see if you got hacked. And, and also get in on everybody else's list as much as you can. And uh, everybody else, a lot, most of my competition, they have 30 or 40 lots on a spreadsheet they're sending out. They're all significantly overpriced. Uh, we don't have anything. I mean, I don't even do that. We generally, as soon as we get it in, I either know exactly where it's going to or it's a good deal. We close on it. We retail it. And so we don't really do that. But you've got these companies that are spreadsheets, 30, 40, 50 lots deep, and they're all significantly overpriced. And all you're doing is you're wasting your time, which is a, a cardinal sin. And even worse, you, you're wasting someone else's time because oh, so many of them know they can't do it. They can't sell it, but they, they just do it anyway. So it's it, most mission critical thing is, uh, you know, you make your money when you buy, especially if you're flipping, you, no matter what you like, and uh, Kevin Dong, uh, everybody locally knows Kevin. He's an agent at my brokerage, Steel Bridge. He's a member of the RIA. He does a lot of flips. And, you know, we'll talk. And it's kind of a bitter thing. He does these flips and he makes a bunch of money. But if there's enough equity to flip it and make a bunch of money, that would have been an amazing long-term hold. So, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> totally agree. All right. So, hey, guys, <clears throat> what I want to do is – I want to push you number one to the MarioDetilloShow.com. That is the YouTube channel. Make sure that you subscribe. And if and if you can, connect with Jeff, connect with me on uh, other social media platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, whatever. Um, <laughs> connect with us and let's, let's start the discussion. Let's do some deals together. If you're getting into real estate and you're looking to learn, um, we'd love to push you in the right direction. If you're already in the mobile home park investment world and you're looking to maybe scale it, connect with me. I'd love to help you. Jeff mentioned something that was important is that he's partnered with people and they're learning from it, right? So you can, you know, lean on other people that are doing this and all team up with them, partner with them. You might even make a little bit less money on that first couple of deals, but you're going to learn a ton working with people who know what they're doing. And uh, I think both of us would love to love to work with you on our respective in, in our respective property type. So um, thanks for hopping on. Make sure to subscribe. Drop some comments. We're going to follow up on this too because um, although this was live, there's going to be a lot of people that watch this after the fact. And if you have questions about getting started in real estate, drop them in the comments. Jeff, myself, LZ, uh, Dimitri might even follow up and check up on them as well. We'll we'll make sure that these questions get answered. We just want to be a resource for you. So stay tuned. We're going to do some more um, live episodes like this uh, on the YouTube channel and uh, keep helping you grow your real estate investment business. Thanks again, Jeff, for being on. Thanks, LZ. Thanks, Dimitri. Thanks all the people that have commented and uh, see you guys soon. Take care. Awesome.